Moving in to the NFC South, we have the Atlanta Falcons at nine and a half over under win totals with a strength of schedule of 4.53, one of the easiest in the NFL. Atlanta plays Pittsburgh, Fiddly, KC. So tough start with three games. Then they move on to New Orleans, Tampa Bay, Carolina, Seattle, Tampa Bay, Dallas, New Orleans, Denver. Then they have a bye. The Chargers, Minnesota, the Las Vegas, the Giants, Washington, Carolina. I think that is a pretty safe over. I think 10 wins should be really where they're aiming, especially with Kirk Cousins. And they've won 7-10, and 10, I believe, the last three seasons. If they're not able to get to 10 wins with the added talent from the draft, unfortunately, they didn't really add one in the first round. That is going to help them right now, but that's been beaten. It's a dead horse. I don't know. I just feel like if they don't get to 10 wins, the season's kind of a disappointment. Oh, if they if they don't if they don't find a way to get to the playoffs, somebody if not multiple people are getting fired. And all of a sudden we're in a really weird situation in Atlanta. But I'm with you. Look, I think that I see them getting to 10 wins. I could see them getting to 11. I see them somewhere right in that range, especially with how weak the NFC South is. You know, you've made all these changes, you added a lot of, you know, you added a lot of talent. If you can't find a way to get to 10 wins, Somebody's got to get fired. That's just really the only way you can look at this. I know Falcons fans would agree. So that's really all there is to it if you're the Falcons at this point. You made way too many adjustments and changes to not be a 10-11 win team in this desperately, I don't want to say talent barren, but it's just a shit shoot right now. The NFC South, with the Falcon, with the talent the Falcons have, they should be able to win it. I can see them potentially, you know, again, I, I could see the, Sa- the Saints give them some trouble. I could see the Bucks give them some trouble. But all in all, the Falcons look like they have the roster that's kind of, it's not, it's, it's close, but they're definitely the one above the rest in the NFC South. If they can't find a way to make it happen this year, 10 wins, well, changes have got to be made. And, and it, oh, even though you just made a bunch of changes, there's no more, there's no more time for the Falcons to kind of, right? Falcons fans would agree with that and they would definitely echo the sentiment. Moving into the Carolina Panthers, over under four and a half wins, strength of schedule four five three. They play New Orleans, the Chargers, Las Vegas, Cincinnati, Chicago, Atlanta, Washington, Denver, New Orleans again, the Giants. Then they get a bye. KC, Tampa Bay, Philly, Dallas, Arizona, Tampa Bay, Atlanta. I am going to go under. I don't think they get to five wins this year. As much as I like Bryce Young, and I. Didn't mind their offseason. Didn't really love their draft. Didn't love everything they did on the offseason. And I still don't think Bryce Young is in a great position to succeed. I do think their O-line play will be better. I think their offense will be better because of Dave Canales. I just... I don't... I think the Panthers, to me, are one of the worst drafting teams in the NFL. And those decisions and draft picks you know, linger in terms of how bad your team is. Obviously you have them under contract. So I, I don't know if I love the idea of adding like get to a room with a Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen. I just don't know if that was the right pick. See, I, you got me thinking and it's like, I, I just feel like even though I can like Panthers fans, let me be clear. I'm, I'm switching. I, I initially was going to go over, but I'm going to go under Panthers fans. Let me be clear. Like it's it, especially because too like, you know, there's only a fair amount of teams that could be over. There's only a fair amount of teams that could be under logically. And if we're looking at it in terms of roster construction, like, yeah, the, it, it, let me be clear. Like, if Bryce makes a big jump this year, they, they very well could be six, seven, eight, even pretend maybe eight win team. Like, they, if Bryce makes a big jump, you know, they could, the, the ceiling of this team goes up a lot, which is obviously what they're banking on, right? A lot of new young talent added to the offense in terms of the O line and then Jonathan Brooks. But just all in all, even with an easier schedule, it's just when, the first year head coach did they have the juice to get over the hump of the five wins i just i see them getting right around it's either going to be four or five i feel like the way i see it but again just in terms of statistics i'm going to lean on the opposite side of that where i think they'll finish right around four but again i want to be clear this is one of those ones where if there's a team that could kind of shatter their total and really be like oh yeah you doubted us like yeah yeah haha ha. that that really actually could be the panthers this year because if dave canales comes in and gets the culture right and things really get moving well. Again, like I said, I can see them seeing seven, eight win team, and you know, all of a sudden, Panthers are really building for the future. But we're just going off what we know now. What I know now, I got to have them as under, just like you said. Moving into the New Orleans Saints, seven and a half wins over under. 
4.67 or 4.467 strength of schedule. They open again up against Carolina. Then they have Dallas, Philly, Atlanta, KC, Tampa Bay, Denver, the Chargers, Carolina, Atlanta, Cleveland, then a bye. The Rams, the Giants, Washington, Green Bay, LV, Tampa. I Dobbs, I'll let you go first on this one. See, here's my thing. Derek Carr did finish the season as one of the hottest quarterbacks in the league. We brought Clint Kubiak in. I'm much higher on our receiving core than a lot of people, even though it's definitely still far from being well, like complete. Let me be clear, you know, but I am, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in on Shahid and I'm in on Olave. I'm in on the fact that a lot of people, you know, still are not very big on it, but I think Kendra Miller is going to actually be getting a fair amount of snaps this year. He looked really good towards the end of the year when he was starting to get reps. If we can find a way to make him and Kamara kind of a power combo, and if that defense can play how it was towards the beginning of the season, and it is the problem, though. The Saints, as a Saints fan, I tell you know, I tell everybody all the time, there's just no consistency. The Saints show up and look like the best team in the league against one of the best teams, but then when they play one of the worst teams, they look even worse than one of the worst teams in the league. The Saints have they've had no consistency during the Dennis Allen era, and that's kind of the problem, is when there's no consistency, we don't know what to expect. But I tell you this, as a Saints fan, I do expect them to win at least – at least, but not more than either much really. It's kind of like an 8-10 to 10 win range. But I don't see them winning less than 8. I think it'll be right in that 8-10 to 10 range. Nothing more, nothing less. So with that said, I'm going to go over on this team. I have the Saints at a 7-9 to nine win range. And when I look at the schedule, I just don't have... I will say this. I have confidence in them getting 7. I don't have confidence in them getting... Eight. Not saying they can't do it, but it's just like looking at it. I think they could swing a couple division games their way, and I think that's how they get over that seven and a half hump. So, obviously, division games are a lot more important based on you know your record in the division when you want to make the playoffs. And I think, yes, your team may not be. At, I'm not not speaking for the Saints in general. Just speaking in just speaking across the NFL you may be a worse team than your division opponent, but because of the height of importance of these division games, you're more likely to swing them. So this is one of the lines that is probably, the, this This is probably the hardest line for me outside of, what one was I talking about earlier that was super tough? The Commanders. Um, was... The Commanders. Just very weird. I don't know how to feel about it. No, I'm with you. As a Saints fan, I don't know how to feel about it either. How about this? It's I, I win either way. Because if we go under this, Dennis Allen has his can. <laughs> and if we go over this, we should be a wild card team. And maybe they finally actually started getting some consistency in the Clint Kubiak offense. I'm wishful thinking. Uh, who knows what the hell the Saints future really looks like. But yeah, I'll stick with my guns on this one. Though I think we can find a way to get to eight wins. Finishing up the NFC South with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at eight and a half over under win total. Point. 478 strength of schedule. Tampa Bay opens up against Washington. Then they have Detroit, Denver, Philly, Atlanta, New Orleans, Baltimore, Atlanta, KC, San Francisco, the Giants, Carolina, Vegas, the Chargers, Dallas, Carolina, New Orleans. Ooh, this is tough. This is tough because they start out really, really tough outside of the Washington game and the Denver game. I do think they can get the nine wins. But I really do think it's going to be hard. And I also think there is a chance that they regress a little bit from last year. I think the Bucks are a very, very solid team overall. But I do believe that they overperformed a little bit. So I'm going to go under. I think I'm going to go under just because, and look, I can already hear the comments. Like, you know, how could you go? How could you go over? The, look, the Saints have a whole game difference over the Bucs. And I think that the Bucs and Saints, like I said, are going to finish very much in that same, very similar range. But to your to your point, like you're already saying, look, the thing that I think about with the Bucs, it, here's where the areas of volatility potentially come in. Baker is now comfortable again. Like we saw Baker fighting for his life versus Baker comfortable. We've seen Yes, albeit it was an injured Baker when he wasn't fighting for his life in that contract anymore. But like Baker comfortable versus Baker fighting for his for fighting for his money, fighting for his career. Two different Bakers, right? So now that Baker's back in that more comfortable range, does that have an effect on this offense? Number one, it's a question we have to wait to see answered, right? 
And, you know, like we were talking about um, with Mr. Bucks, like you're in a situation where Todd Bowles, not it's it, the, the fan base was split. Like it was Todd Bowles, the guy was that run. The reason he's even still here. How much is this team all the way bought in on what he's doing? There's a lot of questions on the interior of the O-line, especially if Graham Barton doesn't come in and have the work here that we expect. If Graham Barton comes in and struggles and this in the interior plays how they played last year. Again, you're struggling at three of the five positions. Now, that's just hypothetical. But and then also you have a lot of young guys on defense that are still unproven, a lot of them. So when you pile all that together, I just feel like, yeah, I'm going to say like, again, they could they totally end up getting over it and being that team that wins the division and surprises us just like last year? Oh, they absolutely could. But I'm just going to go under just off the assumptions of everything I just said. I think the NFC South has the easiest strength of schedule by far of any division in the NFL. Oh, that's what I noticed right away. Oh, they definitely do. Moving into the AFC West, we have the Denver Broncos with an over-under win total of 5.5 and, and a strength of schedule of .495. Denver opens up at Seattle. Then they play Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay, the Jets, Las Vegas, the Chargers, the Saints, Carolina, Baltimore, KC, Atlanta, Las Vegas, Cleveland, Indianapolis, the Chargers, Cincinnati, and KC. I think this team gets to six wins this year. I just, because of the coaching pedigree, bringing in Bo Nix, I think he's going to be better right away than a lot of people think. And while this roster still needs a lot of work, I think Sean Payton sets the floor pretty high in terms of how much he can raise it. And Denver won eight games last year. Oh, yeah, no. Let me be clear. Sean Payton won, if I'm not mistaken, eight games with uh, Taysom Hill and Trevor Simeon. Broncos fans, fret not. He's going to find a way to get you guys to six wins this year. And again, I don't know who it's going to come against. I don't know when it's going to come. That, that's kind of the thing with Sean Payton and and just the, the Broncos even under in, recently in, in general. It's like they kind of win some games where you're kind of like, what? Like they won that game? Like I feel like this. that's just with this coaching staff right now, it's just the Broncos. I don't see them winning again. I could, it very well could be just six wins. It very well could be just six, but I don't see them to your point. I don't see them going under six. I think that they very much fall within a six to eight win range. And I kind of just see it like rigidly like that. 